All right. Thank you for another episode of Stoop Talk, where we try to have a down to earth conversation about money and life. Always have good conversations with my family and friends. And so I'm going to introduce another one of my family members today. I'm going to give you a little bit of background on why I have this particular gentleman with me. Um, as of late, in my business, in money mindset and financial therapy, I've come across a lot of creatives. I've come across a lot of painters, sculptors, a lot of dancers, and they've all kind of uh, appreciated and started to look at their business more through the lens of entrepreneurship. And so we've been helping out there. But I haven't had a lot of singers come through. I haven't had a lot of like uh, artists in that vein. So I wanted to talk to you because you are my cousin. <laughs> you are an artist. And so those two things I think are going to really gel well. And so I want to make sure that I give a chance to uh, give voice to the artists, give voice to the creatives, give voice to your perspective, and then also uh, see if I can find the similarities myself so okay. that way I can help this out more. So why don't you let everybody know who you are so I don't uh, misintroduce you because I know I want to make sure that I represent you, your band, your genre, everything that you do. So go ahead and uh, give yourself some time to talk. Well, first of all, man, thank you for having me. You know, even you are my cousin, but it's a <laughs> pleasure. Absolutely. Um, my name is Christopher Blunt. My artist name is Christopher Michael. I live in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm 34 years old. I've been singing my whole life. Um, I am currently in a, what you would call a, uh, a corporate, the owned band. We travel all around the United States doing high end corporate functions and, and you name it, weddings, um, bar mitzvahs, <laughs> bath mitzvahs, uh, corporate, like we, we did like the Super Bowl when the Super Bowl was here in Atlanta, just different things like that, just on the high end. And whoever wants us to be there, we'll do it. We're doing the tree lighting for Atlanta. We're doing the tree lighting for the Atlanta Braves. We do like things like that. Just like it's all covers, but it's a lot of fun. Oh, man, that sounds solid. I like it. And so... In and of itself, you kind of have this way of bringing in this corporate and artist, uh, you know, lifestyles into one already. And so I'm kind of interested. Do you see yourself as an entrepreneur? Do you see yourself as an artist? Do you see yourself as a combination of both? How would you describe it? Um, I think I see myself as a, um, a combination of both um, because I also find myself doing other things outside of um, this band, whether it be... Um, singing like with church or writing with other artists and you know doing background vocals for this person or you know whatever the case may be and i'm doing all this full time and i feel like i went from working a nine to five and doing this at the same time and i was tired boy <laughs> like, that was a that was a grind but um it took it took that leap of faith and to understand that this is what i want to do and um i I'm even on like certain apps that people will call me and, Hey, I just need you to come and sing for 15 minutes for to sing happy birthday. And I get, you know, I charge them whatever I charge them. So I look at it as like both because like I said, I'm building a brand for myself um, through this, but I'm also like helping others as well. So. Cool. And do you see other artists doing the same thing? Like as they build their brands, as they try to become, a little bit more scalable uh, with all the technology you mentioned using apps. And so you have this ability to make uh, money via corporate, like uh, you have the ability to make money via the app. So you're giving yourselves a lot of opportunities for streams of income. That's the same exact thing that entrepreneurs do right. with their streams of income. So it's almost the same. Do you think a lot of other people uh, feel that same way or at least among your band members or folks you talk to? Absolutely, especially amongst my band members, for sure. Um, I think that um, being in this band, I've been doing what I do now for um, almost 10 years now. Um, well, actually, it'll, no, 11 years now. Wow. I need it already. Good Lord. Um, I think that it's, it's, it's crucial for what we do being on stage, like, if you want to be an actual artist and you want to be on stage in front of a lot of people and who knows you, your song might pop and you, they're like, Oh, hop on this tour with whoever. And if you're not ready for that, then good luck, man. 
<laughs> and it's, it's, it's trained me to be able to be in any situation and be comfortable in who I am as a vocalist, but also like be humble on stage and know that I trust the people that are behind me that got my back and I know how to read the crowd. I know how to know when something works, when something doesn't work, what to say, like there's no dead space, is there dead space? Like just things like that. Like you just, you pick up on a lot of just different things. And I feel like a lot of artists don't have that avenue or don't even know about the avenue that I'm in to even like understand it. But that's like, yeah. you know, but in my space for sure. Yeah. And I would say that that's kind of like what entrepreneurship is. I was just thinking about, it. you said a couple of things that I hear with a lot of entrepreneurs. A lot of entrepreneurs did something on the side as they were doing a nine to five and they kind of were drawn to it. Uh, yeah. It didn't make them tired. It was just something that they felt that they needed to do and yeah. could do, you know, without getting paid and they, and they wouldn't get tired from it. And at some point it actually just converted into what became your full-time gig. Uh, yeah. The other thing is that you have to have this belief in yourself yeah. to take this leap of faith. And so those are the two kind of uh, elements that I hear in entrepreneurship a lot, uh, is that whatever it is, if, if it's software, if it's coding, I talk to one person who like taught themselves how to code, and then you do it for a couple of years, and then you realize you can build your own company and sell your own software. And so you do it, right? Because you know that you can. And it seems right. like that's the same type of uh, attitude you just described. So, you know, similarity there between that artist mindset and that entrepreneurship mindset, uh, definitely. And everybody doesn't have it. And I think you spoke to that point. Like, it's not, you know, just because you can sing doesn't mean you can be a business. You know what I mean? Like some people can sing and you're good to sing whenever, you know, you want to hum your tunes. And some people have the ability to sing and actually create scale marketability brand and create yeah. income for themselves so i think that that's a little bit different you know tell me this though how do you as an artist how do you make money like like what's the way that you end up positive at the end of the day like how does an artist make money i mean there's a so many that's a loaded question but there's so many different ways to um i guess make money like i gave you a couple like with you know doing just things here and there for through the apps and stuff like that. You can teach. I used to teach at um, this school called AIM, um, Atlanta Institute of Music. Um, if you have, like, say you have a, I have a brand called Be A Vibe. I can sell, like, some of my shirts, stuff like that. Um, if you're writing for people, you know, I used to, when I was in college, I used to go to the studio and I used to just write hooks for rappers and <laughs> charge them a fee, let them have the hook. I didn't ask for any royalties or anything like that. But um, I mean, nowadays, like if I'm going to go into the studio with somebody, I'm going to, you know, make sure I get credit for it and stuff like that. Um, I mean, those are just a couple of things that just to name. I mean, you can uh, go do live music somewhere, like go to a bar, work on your chops, see what people like, see what songs, see what, what songs grab it, get the people going with your voice in particular. You know what I mean? Cause you a lot you, people love wagon wheel, but it's it's wagon wheel. But how do you sing wagon wheel? What does you know? Just I think about stuff like that when I'm on stage. Like what songs work for me and what songs don't. So mm -hmm. just different things like that. But. And I like the fact uh, because I mean you give yourself the ability to to kind of appeal to a wide audience, and so. Yeah. Um, I'll give you two things that came to mind, at least as you were talking about it. I think, you know, one is your ability to uh, go out there, uh, you know, be ambitious and find ways to make money survive, you know, do what you got to do and do it in a couple of different disciplines just to continue to, to do what you love to do. Uh, but the other thing that it, it made me think of is like with the artists that we had coming in, you know, two questions uh, that I have for you. Have you ever done a business plan for yourself? I have. I have a few of them, actually. Yeah. And, like, I've been just trying to go down the list and just check off the boxes as I'm going along. I know it's like, because I'm, I mean, being a, being a full-time musician is hard. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, financially hard. So it's like, you have to be very strategic at what you do and, like, hone in on, like, because I, I like to travel. I'm just going to call it what it is. 
I love to travel, so like I put aside money to do that. I put aside money to do what I need to do for my home. I put aside money what I need to do for like my business and stuff like that. So, um, but I have a list and I just go down. Like I don't like say, oh, I need to do it like right now. I just put it on the list. This is what I want to do from this from this day to this day. I just kind of just check them off slowly but mm-hmm. sure. I'm gonna get to it. No rush. <laughs> no rush at all. One of the- Otherwise, you'll stress yourself out. It's like, like the bigger picture is here, but you just gotta check those small boxes, and you'll you'll get there eventually. What? And how do you like? So if, uh, like, how much would you pay to see you perform? So, like, uh, as you come up with these things, what are you taking into account? So how would, how do you base your uh, your fee structure? Like, are you base it on how much you think you would pay to see an artist of your caliber, or what factors do you take into account? Um, well, it depends. Like, so like if my band, like the corporate band is a totally different situation. If you're asking for like, um, just to hear me with my original music, like, cause I haven't done a, uh, like nobody knows who I am right now, but mm-hmm. I would say like right now with the caliber of talent that I have, I would be like 50 bucks. That's mm-hmm. fair. Okay. Anywhere between thirty-five yeah. and fifty bucks is good. And so thirty-five and fifty bucks, and that's what you're charging now, or somewhere around there. So like you know what your value is, and that's what you're charging like right now. Well, if I'm doing like so, if, if somebody wants me to come sing at to you know one song, two songs for their significant other, I'm charging probably like three to four hundred dollars just to do that. I'm not leaving my house yeah. for anything less. Yeah. So that's the main thing I was going to see because we have these, uh, you know, conversations that happen among a lot of entrepreneurs, especially the ones that are, are just getting started is, is how do you price? Like if you're going to sell something, how do you come up with your price? And we find mm-hmm. that a lot of people, they do it based on hunch. They do it based on feel. And when you actually sit down and start to chop these numbers up, you actually come up with a good way to break everything out. Um mm-hmm. And so just in terms of the way you said it, you want to have, you know, stuff to take care of your travel, stuff to take care of your home. And then you want to be able to like, just take care of your business. So you got that third and third and third. But then also we want to always make sure that we know how much you want to make every single year, right? We try to do that for entrepreneurs and say, look, how much do you want to make this year? And then we put that out there as a target. And then we say, okay, how are we going to get there? How are we going to make it? So do you put those types of goals and target on yourself as well? Not here are the things I would like to do, but you know, here's an amount that I know I can make and I know that I'm worth it. So I'm oh, going to go get it. Absolutely. Um, so like we with, well, so with the band, that's my main, that's my, you know, my bread and butter right now. Um, so I look at our calendar and I'm saying, okay. And we get dates booked out at least a year to six months in advance. So I get to see like, okay, this is what my year looks like. So how do I capitalize on that? What, how can I fill those other dates in or during the week, what can I do? Or, you know what I mean? Like stuff like that. I'm always trying to figure that out as well. I don't think that I put a number on, you know what I mean? Like, but I know like what I, I know what I made last year. Let's, you know, let's, let's try to make more of course, but let's try to double it if we can. You know what I mean? And I think that's a good idea because, like, like we got to know how much we how much we made, how much we want to make, how much yeah. we can make. Like those are all yeah. those levels, right? So it seems yeah. like you have that idea in mind. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. What about uh, like ways that an artist would invest in, in themselves? So, like, there's how much you want to make because there's how much you want to get paid, how much you want to be able. To do the things, how much should how much of that money should be an investment in the craft? How much should be an investment back into that artist to to be better at some point? I mean, depending on what your income is, I would say like like if you feel like you need like if you want to if you want to learn an instrument, if you want to do get better vocally, YouTube is free, baby. So like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, like. YouTube University is everything. So, like, I feel like a lot of people don't take advantage of the fact that there's free things online. 
But if you're talking about like investing like into like equipment and stuff like that, um, I mean, the sky's the limit. Whatever you want to, whatever you feel like you want to do and put into it, you know, like when people ask me what I want for Christmas, I'm like, I'd love something musically or something like, you know, something that can benefit this. You know, people have gifted me guitar lessons and piano lessons and just stuff like that. Just because I'm thinking about that. You know what I mean? I don't need a, a gaming system right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, these are just, it's important. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I have those things, but it wasn't on like, it wasn't top priority. I'll tell you that. Nah, I got you. I was actually thinking because, um, you know, there's probably a couple of things came to mind. Like if I were just going to say, you know what? All right, Chris, so let me stop being like a, uh, a host for a second. Let me just be your cousin. I, I would say, yeah, you know, like there's a couple of things that I heard that I think it can definitely help with, or that would help. Like the first thing that I always tell people is like business plans. When I hear people like have a couple of them and checking them off, first thing I say is let's get rid of all of them. And let's do what's called like this uh, lean business campus, right? It's just a one pager mm -hmm. that just throws everything out there. We lay out kind of how everything needs to be set up. And we just create, uh, you know, a game plan. Like we market, uh, kind of market the artists like we would market, any type of product, like who's your audience? How are you going to get to them? Gotcha. Um, you know, what's it going to take to get to them? How yeah. much do you want to make? What are you willing to do to get there? And you just, you plan these things out on one page so you could just look at it every day and be like, yep, I'm good. Uh, so that way we don't want you to kind of, you know, create a bigger plan and then check off little increments, but you want to always know, like you said, you want to have that big picture in mind. Yeah. And so that'll be, kind of one way I would say you can make that whole thing easier. Go from like a bunch of business plans and checking them off to like a one page lean business canvas and just have it all right there. We can help you put that stuff together. Absolutely. I think the other thing is like really coming up with some, you know, good price for you. Like I love to tell people like you got to come up with your hourly rate, like you said, for you to get out of bed and then what it costs you to do everything yeah. And then you start to plug it in. I find that a lot of uh, entrepreneurs and a lot of artists negotiate them ways they're with themselves in the poverty sometimes yeah. just to do their craft and people take advantage of that. And so one of the things that we do is we just come up with price structures and we kind of put them out there, you know, in their own little places and, and kind of um, set them up and you have some of that. And so I'd say definitely do more. Uh, it's crazy because it's, it's funny you say that because people – People will, like you said, they'll put themselves into poverty. People undercut, they don't like, they undercut themselves so much. And like, mm -hmm. people are willing to pay this money. Like, the people yeah. that are on these apps have money. They're, they're like, yeah. yo, like, how much do you charge? And I'm the first time I did it, and I was like, I was like, oh, I charged like, I think I was like, I'll do it for 150. He was like, oh man, I would have did it for, I would have gave you 300. Mm -hmm. And he ended up giving me 300 when I got to the house because I did a good job. But after yeah. that, I was like, oh, let's go. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's one but of that the things like, we got to teach people. A learning experience. That was like years ago. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like now I'm like, yeah. and then talking to like a lot of these, um, a lot of um, actually horn players, because they get, um, they usually get like asked to just come on a whim. And they're like, how mm -hmm. much do you charge? So I started hearing how they do business. And these dudes are making money <laughs> like and i was like that is but how they do it is so smart and they're they, like they're they got me to the point where i'm turning down gigs i'm able to say no you know what yeah. i mean and i think that is the power in being a, an artist when you can say no when you can say like this mm -hmm. is my fee and if take it or leave it and it is what it is but what I what I do do that some guys do not do. If I can't do it or I won't do it, I slide that to somebody else. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's a, and so we gotta so and that's what you try to teach people in business. I think the two things that you said that you know I just dovetail off of. You know, first one is a lot of people come up with prices just based on hunch, right? So you need to talk to somebody and establish what your price is. Like for example, 
you know, some of the things that I think are wise to do is never do anything for less than an hour. Like you just say, here's my hourly rate and I don't do anything for less than an hour. <laughs> so even if you want me to come and talk to you for 15 minutes, I'm still going to charge you for an hour. Like that's just the way it works, right? You base your hourly fee on my education, my experience level, and that's how I'm able to justify this, right? I went to school for, uh, you know, I went to school for what a thousand hours, or I, I have a thousand hours of experience. You know, divide that up by how many times I want to get it back for me in the future, and that's what my hourly rate's going to be. Like that's what that's the way we set hourly rates in business. And so, if artists just did that, you know what I mean? So set a rate that's like i only do hourly right here's my hourly rate and that's what it is and i can do 15 minutes or i could do an hour right but my time is my time i, I think that's what you try to do because in business you don't want a shortcut and so right. if i'm spending 15 minutes it's going to be an hour right? because i got to prepare i got to do all this other stuff yeah. so don't let people kind of try to shortcut you by Absolutely. chopping up that time you know Absolutely. so i'm either going so i do things in an hour if i got to travel then it's a Here's what I, here's what my fee is with a two hour minimum, kind of locking it all in. So artists that are out there, don't do anything just on the hum, don't do anything by the minute. Like, lock your fee in, know what your hourly fee is, and that's the type of stuff that you ask. When somebody says, "Hey, how much for this?" then you'll be able to say, "Well, how long do you think it'll take?" Boom, this is how long it is. This is how much it'll cost. That's Small huge. Things like that. That. That's so huge. You said that the um the fact that people don't understand like if somebody asks me this hey can you come sing for like you said 15 minutes what song this song i don't know that song so i now have to learn this song to come sing for 15 minutes like you said the travel you know two songs now i got two songs to learn how long does it take you to learn one song in my case mm -hmm. i would give it a couple of hours mm -hmm. you know a couple of hours to learn a song depending on the song, depending on if I'm familiar with it or not, whether I know it or not, like whatever. I have to sit down and learn this song. How does how how does how do you want me to perform this song? A cappella. Really? So, you know, or I have a system where I can bring a speaker. Or I can hire a, another guy to come play saxophone or a guy to play piano or a guy to play guitar. Whatever you want. Whatever. Cool. You have to think about those things that are like, I'm like, what do you how can I make your day the best day? Or how can we make this situation better? When you're mm -hmm. talking to um, guys like doing the bar gigs or doing just random gigs here and there, like um, I'm actually gonna do a, um, a company like solo gig at um, one of these um, companies out here. They're doing like a brunch thing. I'm talking cool. to her and she's talking talking back to me like, "Hey, do you have insurance?" And I was like, "And I've worked with her before, but like she's with a different company, so it's like all these things. What's your budget?" And that's one thing I ask people first and foremost. You don't, you ask them what their budget is. Yes. That way you can get a read. That yeah. way you can get a read. What's your budget? Yeah. I'm willing to work with people, but if, if their budget is like $50 to $100, I'm not the guy for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, so that's a good, that's a good that's, A lot of artists get killed like that. I would tell you one of the things that you start to see is just, you know, you just have to know your, your value. So I know for me, if I'm going to do an hour presentation or if I'm mm -hmm. going to teach for an hour, for example, that ain't just an hour that I'm waking up that day and going to teach for an hour. Like it took me 10 hours of whatever work, whatever reading the textbook or preparing, going through notes. That's, that's how long cool. it's going to take me to be able to deliver for mm -hmm. an hour. Right. And so that's what I base my hourly fee on. It's not like some arbitrary number that you want to throw out there, but right. if I spent 10 hours trying to do something and I want to make X amount of money for doing it. I'm going to divide those two that, and then I'm going to end up with what my hourly fee will be. And this is how many of these things I want to do. And so if more people did something like that for their skill, which we try to teach artists to do, right? you create your own environment where you either do two things. One, you let people immediately know what your fees are. Or two, you come up with different versions of what you do. I always tell people like you could be an artist that's yeah. Like you could be you could give your gold standard performance and then you can, you know, show up and get you could show up and do that talk. But I mean, yeah. people are gonna have to understand the differences between those and that's what that's what you're charging for. You have to be confident enough to be able to say that. You have to be confident enough to know that about yourself and confident enough to say, 
this is what it is. I put 10 hours in just to be able to deliver an hour for you. Right. So you one, let's have a conversation for you to see how this hour is going to go, but yeah. I'm going to give you the best hour possible <laughs> as long as I know what you need. And that's what you're paying for. How many artists can like put that type of quantifier on their, on their work. That's important. Well, not usually, I would say nine times out of 10, you're asking me to do a service. So right. like, if I say like this is my fee, that's just a rebuttal. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just like a normal conversation, you know? Yeah. And that's just what it is. Like you have to be able to like like you said, be comfortable in that and like be like, yeah. it's okay. It's okay to to I'm sorry, maybe we might go with somebody else. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's the point. <laughs> and and I think that's where entrepreneurship and artists have to like you're are valuable. And so like, we have to take these things into account. And so I remember uh, one of the last times that we talked that I know that you can always go to that next level. And I know that you have that potential to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're always holding yourself back a little bit. So what's keeping you, what, what's holding you back from taking yourself to this next level and, and how do we get you there? Hmm. Oh, that's a, that's another another question. Um, I think um, I'm in. I guess since the last time we talked, but like in recent months, um, I'm starting to take that that next step as far as like just my focus. Um, I think that um, these past two years and like I don't know I told you about the whole seizure and all that stuff. Like that took a toll on me, and like I kind of like got you know, blurred out a little bit and kind of like down and like my anxiety has been high and like, it's been like in the past couple of months where I've been like, actually like, you know what? Screw that. You know, like yeah. let's, let's focus back on who you are. Let's focus back on you and like how, you, what you want to do. And like, like, even though like that happened, but don't let that, you know, depict like the rest of your future. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that um, that's number one. Um, but then, like, I've been, like, talking to a lot of, you know, artists and stuff like that. I've been, like, talking. I met went to this thing with um, my girl the other day. And I met this lady that was on the board for the Grammys. And, like, it's just, like, these things are just starting to, like, just come. And just, mm -hmm. like, just I'm being surrounded by just positivity and stuff like that. So I think that's that's helping the situation as well. Um, mm -hmm. But I think the only thing that was stopping me from taking that next step was me. And that's just the truth. Well said, cuz. I think it happens to a lot of us. And so what I'd say is, uh, you know, it's also focus. You know, I, I think once you, like, put the head down and start to move forward, you know, you really got to take that one step. And once you start to take that one step, you force yourself to take the second one. Yeah. And so sometimes it's really just a matter of saying, hey, you know, I got to take care of myself first, right? I got to be confident where my feet are right now, and I yeah. got to be willing to take that first step. And then once I do, people will follow me. And then Absolutely. what you start to see then is like you were blind to opportunities before, like things because your head was just down because you ain't want to lift your head up and kind of look around. But now that you take that step forward and you've taken that second step, you got your head up. And all of a sudden you see these opportunities and people, you say hi to folks that you didn't say hi to before, or you go to places that you didn't go to before. Yeah. And then all of a sudden this starts working out for you. And then the next thing you know, the next thing you know, you just got to be ready. Like you said, right? If somebody says, yeah. are you ready to pop off? Like you said, if they want to throw you on tour, you have to be willing to say yes. And I yeah. think that that would be the last thing that I leave. Uh, some people with is that that's the hardest part for folks. I remember in business, it was like that for me, but in, in artists, uh, it could be like that as well. When you get these chances, when somebody says, Hey, I need you to do X now right and now. go there and do it right now. You need to be yeah. able to say, okay, yeah. not hesitate, not think about it at all. Like you have to be able to say, yeah, I'm ready. Let me think about the other stuff later, but let's go ahead and let's get this thing started. And if you can well, do that, <laughs> yeah, that's what you got. Like, if you could do that, if you can in your mind be able to say, at that moment, I'm going to be ready and yeah. I'll be able to deal with all that other stuff afterward, like, that's yeah. when you know that you could take that next level. Yeah. yeah. And I think I'm I appreciate it. I think people are really um, going to hear that. And I think you're going to do that. Absolutely. I'm in the process of doing that now, man. I've been talking to uh, one of my guys is on tour and he's like, he's like, bro, 
I'm on tour, but I can't wait to get back. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I can't wait to get back because we have so much to do. And, like, I'm just excited about this whole, just this next phase of my life. And, yeah, I'm pumped, man. It's going to be cool. All right, man. Well, Cuzzo, I appreciate it. I think everybody's going to enjoy this conversation. I know I did. I'll always enjoy having people always, man. We uh, always come to our world. Come coming to these blunt conversations and then <laughs> yeah. let them learn something. So Absolutely. I appreciate it. Uh, appreciate Absolutely. you sticking around with me. Hey man, anytime. You know, let people know where they can find you. I'm just I, I don't want to uh, want to make sure they know where you're at. So can they find you online or yeah, can you they just follow you wherever? Follow me on Instagram at who is Christopher Michael. It's uh, let's see who Christopher M I C H E A L. And that's me on Instagram right now. Music is coming soon, so just stand by, man. All right. Thank you, Cuzzo. I appreciate it, man. Absolutely, man.